Hello everyone. I'm live again. Um, I think one of the participants tried to send an invite, uh, send an invite request. Uh, he or she wanted to be part of the video. And that was the time when the video flipped. Um, it, is, it is a technical glitch, I believe. Uh, we'll be starting our video pretty soon. This is in relation to our How Can I Help You initiative and we are trying to interview our guest Cynthia Ritchie. This video broadcast is for that. So hopefully uh, Cynthia will join us soon and we will then take her live with us. Uh, here she is. Cynthia, I'm sending you the invite once again. Flip this time. All right. So okay. here she is. I think I'm going to go all over again because I'm so excited to have you. This is um, Cynthia Ritchie. Uh, she is known as a person who loves Pakistan. And she has been interviewed by a lot of Pakistani news channels, including ARY News. She works in Pakistan on a lot of projects for the welfare of communities there. She makes documentaries and uh, she writes articles to portray a better image of Pakistan across the globe. She travels extensively and stays in Pakistan to work with the communities there for their welfare. She is also learning Urdu language, which is going to be interesting for our show. Cynthia, I'm honored to host you. Welcome to our show. Thank you so much, Asif. Your Urdu is quite good, I must say. <laughs> it's just, you know, you, you have to live, if you live in Pakistan for a few years, you, you pick up a few things that's important, you know, and uh, I do know a few right. Punjabi abuses, but I'll spare you this time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We'll, we'll see. I also understand a little bit of Punjabi. And um, <laughs> this is very important. You're right. When you're traveling somewhere, when you're connecting with people, language actually helps you a lot. Yes, All right. it's amazing so, how much just saying salam, you know, breaks the ice and, and warms people to you. Yes, yes, exactly. So uh, a lot of people who uh, know you, I know you have a huge fan following, you have a huge fan base, people are already uh, admiring you, the, all the great work that you're doing. But for the audience who are watching you for the first time, would you please introduce yourself? Ah, right. Um, I know I'm Cynthia Ritchie. Hey, I'm Rikiyomo, and I am uh, working on a documentary production showing uh, the more objective side of Pakistan and a number of other communities as well. I am originally from the South and America, Louisiana and Texas, and our culture is very conservative. We have a number of things in common uh, with the Pakistani community, including being a little bit more conservative. Our faith is very important. Our family is very important. And everything is centered around food. So when I had the opportunity to travel uh, to Pakistan and live there for three years, I, I simply could not pass it up. And so I've been blessed to make many new friends and see an extraordinarily beautiful country with um, Amazing. One can never get bored eating in Pakistan uh, with, with so many different cultures and the, the provinces and the, the microcosms of society within the country. It's truly an adventurer's heaven. Hmm. Thank you. And I flipped once again. There is uh, someone with the name of Akil Raja. He's interrupting the broadcast somehow, but I'm going to go with that. Uh, let's do this video. And uh, I wanted to ask you for political reasons. Uh, a very negative image of Pakistan has been portrayed. How was your experience when you visited Pakistan? Well, there are, of course, are challenges in the country as there are with um, any country, frankly. Uh, there are, uh, are elements of uh, militantism, 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 excuse me, uh, religious mm -hmm. extremism, um, child labor, um, uh, the challenge of democracy uh, within the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. But setting that aside, the overwhelming majority of my time in Pakistan was beautiful. And the 
99% of the people that I've met and, and know and have the honor of, of calling my friends are never really portrayed in Pakistan. What we hear is a fraction of what actually takes place in the country. And I think that's unfortunately one of the things that America and Pakistan has in common now too, because the media, if, as we probably all know, now regarding America is very different than what it was 15, 20 years ago. Now you cannot turn on a broadcast in America or watch an American network without seeing something negative somewhere. So imagine being a young person growing up in Pakistan, that that's all that they've ever known is that their country is constantly being portrayed negatively when the reality is far different. Correct, correct. I agree with that. So all of the uh, projects that you did, what was the motivational factor that led you to Pakistan? What encouraged you to go with all that negative um, portrayal? You know, uh, I have to um, remember the Pakistani Americans, the diaspora who originally invited me to Pakistan out of Houston, Texas, and the Pakistan Chamber of Commerce. I never had any expectation of, of visiting Pakistan before when the floods happened in 2010, but uh, through their encouragement, they really opened up my eyes to a very different world. And so my motivation now is just as much for us as Americans as it would be for uh, Pakistanis or other uh, communities who find themselves being oppressed and wrongly represented in the international community. I know what it feels like personally to be mm -hmm. wrongly accused of things, and it doesn't feel good. Um, that said, I didn't grow up with a lot of people looking at me suspiciously, so I can only imagine how that might feel for people who come from countries where they're constantly being portrayed as terrorists, right? So this is really more for a global community. It's for our peace of mind, and it's for our global uh, well-being. Right, right, all right. Um, share a sweet memory with us from the time that you spent in Pakistan. Say again, there's a bit of a delay. Okay. Okay, I was saying if you could share a sweet memory with us from the time that you spent in Pakistan. Oh, wow. Um, I've had you know, I've been able, I learned that I, I did have an obsession. I learned to very much appreciate Dood Pati. Uh, <laughs> just with some, you know, chai, chai with milk. And I, I had the opportunity to sort of uh, milk my own cow, if you will. And it was, that was quite the adventure, let me say. Uh, not, not exactly what I expected. <laughs> but, um, it, you know, I met so many beautiful children and the young people that I've had the privilege of meeting in a number of universities around the country were incredibly inspiring to me. And so many of them remain connected with me on social media now. I really look up to those young people, some of you know, 10, 15, 20 years younger than I am, doing so much, not only for themselves and their families, but for their country. And I think their song is largely unsung. And I would love to see uh, their governments, the provincial and the federal governments, take more of a proactive approach in highlighting the, the talented youth of that nation, because those will be the people that help really bring about a, a peaceful, progressive Pakistan, just as I believe for our nation here in America. Right, right. And we are, we are uh, doing our bit to, uh, to help achieve that. So I have... I have uh looked at your documentaries, I've studied your articles. You talk a lot about the similarities that exist between the citizens of Pakistan and the citizens of United States. What are those similarities that you want to mention here? If you were to come, if any Pakistanis were to come to my family's home, my mother would make sure they were fed, whether they wanted to or not, you know. <laughs> so I think the hospitality is the first thing, the obvious thing that really hits, um, really strikes you about uh, Pakistan, India, South Asia as a general whole, because guests are sort of treated like gods. They're very well respected. They're very well thought of. 
uh, many of like my Pashtun friends, you know, they take that very seriously. They look out for your safety as an invited guest. They're very protective of you. And as Southerners, we, we are known for our hospitality as well. And sometimes on the, other, on the other side of that, though, Southerners can be a bit narrow-minded or a bit suspicious of things that they're not entirely familiar with. So those are two of the things that really struck me about the similarities. And also, you know, in the South, if you're not married with 2.7 children in a house with a white picket fence, by the time you're 21, there's something wrong with you, right? At least that was the perspective 10, 15, 20 years ago. And so when I left the South in the United States, I thought, okay, I'm getting away from all of this because being a single woman, people wonder what's wrong, right? And so I thought, oh, I'm finally going to get to travel and get away from all of that. When I get away from all those busy body, you know, those aunties that sit on the porch and just drink mint juleps and wonder what Cynthia's doing, you know. And then I fly to Pakistan, and little did I know I was landing in the mothership. That's, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what's sort of one of the more dangerous things I would say about Pakistan are all the Rishta aunties and Rishta uncles that won't mm -hmm. leave you alone. <laughs> that's just the... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're so right about it. And anybody who is uh, across that age, they they can relate to it. How how much pressure they feel from their families and a lot of relatives who are just after their lives to get married and and do them, you know, rich thou fight, get them married. All right. So um, a lot of um, the projects you have done. What is your upcoming project? What are you up to now? So I'm, uh, we have, we, this production uh, that we've been working on is, is a massive endeavor. It's, it's not going to um, happen overnight. We still have about 20, we have about 80% of our principal photography complete in Pakistan. And we will be going back uh, fairly soon to uh, wrap up production in the country. So we are planning uh, for that trip as well as additional countries to add to this compilation. Okay. And um, all the people who are watching you who want to donate to your cause so that your project is a success, how can they donate to your cause? Mm. Well, we do have a 501c3 that's registered in the state of California. We are also PayPal and Facebook verified. Our nonprofit is Culture Inc. And we do have an online campaign um, that is through the Classy site. I believe I shared the link with you earlier today. So if yes. uh, people are uh, stateside or I think you, they can connect uh, either via PayPal or the link provided in the Classy website. All right, and I, I, I saw that there is an option to pay through their credit cards, uh, so they can do that. Uh, I will be sharing the link uh, after we uh, finish this show, so people who want to uh, contribute and donate to the cause, uh, because this is a very, very good cause. You're working for the betterment of Pakistanis. You're portraying a brighter, better image of them across the globe. So I think that must be at the heart of the Pakistanis and they must contribute and donate to your cause. And I personally made a contribution when I received that link. So I'm, oh. I'm all on. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, you know, it's, I think it's also a bit shocking um, for a lot of Pakistanis because they're not accustomed to seeing something like this. You know, it's right. people sometimes very frankly, very honestly uh, are suspicious you know, and wonder why, you know, and to those people who say, why Pakistan? I say, why not Pakistan? You know, these are people that have bought this pervasive narrative that is unfortunate, that they have been so bombarded with this negativity that they are becoming their own self-fulfilling prophecy, you know? And so it is attention, psycho basic psychology 101, attention is one of the greatest reinforcers. If you go, if you have children or if you go into a classroom and you see one or two, maybe a child that's doing a naughty behavior, you know, you want to give attention to those things that you, are, you want to reward that child with attention for the behaviors that they do. Well, it's very similar within our global community. 
You know, we don't want to sh constantly show the little bits of negative things that are happening in the world. Otherwise, we may start thinking that we're this. This is what we all are. I mean, if I say to you, Asif, oh, I love your blue shirt with red polka dots. You know, that's a fabulous blue shirt with red polka dots. And you're clearly not wearing a blue shirt with red polka dots. But if I keep repeating it over and over, you might actually start thinking you're wearing a blue shirt with right. red polka dots. And that's simple psychology 101. It's, you know, so right. our goal is to say, look, the American people, just as the Pakistani people, the overwhelming majority of all of us have far more in common than we have differences. That's an excellent point. That's a uh, that's very good way of, of summarizing it. That's a very good way of addressing those concerns that people may have. And I know by experience that it is it is correct. Some people have that narrative when they suspect why um, you're doing this work for Pakistan. But I also want to assure you that the just like you said, the overwhelming majority of Pakistanis, they appreciate it so much. You can watch on this video after uh, uh, we have done this show that people are admiring all the good work. They haven't even uh, completely looked at the documentaries and all the great work that you have done, all the sacrifices that you have made to travel to um, Pakistan and work for, for communities there. But still they're admiring just listening to you. So just imagine when they see you work, when they look at your documentaries and read the articles, they will definitely love you more on that and they will definitely support you more on that. I'm pretty sure about it. Thank you. I, and I, I, I very much appreciate the sentiments. For me, what's the more important is the message, not so much the messenger, you know, and, um, you know, there's a guy, Syed Asif, love from India to Cynthia, you know, that's one of the things that um, I want people to know is that when I've traveled India, uh, I've never heard Indians speak negatively about Pakistanis. And as much time as I've spent in Pakistan, I have never heard Pakistanis say anything negative uh, about India. And in fact, it's that propaganda, that pervasive propaganda that continues to keep people apart. You know, the classic divide and conquer. And so for everyone in India, I love them just as much as I love um, Pakistanis. I just wanted to start in Pakistan because frankly, they gave me, Pakistanis don't know how much they gave me. They educated me. They gave me an offer. And ed to me, education is one of the most important things that we can have. And we get that through world travel if when we can. And so despite the challenges and despite the suspicious natures and despite um, the negative sort of the roadblocks that I've encountered along the way, I have to always remind myself that I loved, I love obstacle courses. I love obstacle courses. And so in school, I would beat all the obstacle courses and I would look back as, and I embrace it as a challenge. And that's what I'm trying to, that's how I have to frame it today. But I am always going to be in debt to the Pakistani people for giving me a chance to learn about their culture in a way that I otherwise would never have been able to do so. And that for me is priceless. That's amazing. And now I know why our video is, um, you know, um, portrayed in this way. We have this obstacles when you're flip side like this, and I'm like this. This is just because you love obstacles. That's why you <laughs> have to be like I'm a magnet for obstacles. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. <laughs> when you when you see a roadblock, you know the first thing you think of is, well, how do we get around it? How do we get over it? <laughs> That's. I had to step back so that people can see me and see you, although they are seeing us in a totally different way as compared to how they see us. But this is this is a good time to tell everyone who is watching us that the obstacles will come in your way, but you have to find a way to work through them. You should not just surrender. You should not just abort your plan. You should continue. So this is, this is excellent to hear. Yeah. All right. 
what is uh, one message that you would like to give to our audience? You know, we're, we're much better off than what the media would portray. And what I tell people is that when they think that the world is falling down around them based on their limited knowledge of the media, I ask them to look with them and to remember who they are as humans being. Hmm. And despite the constant xenophobia and Islamophobia that we are all being bombarded with, I ask people to remember how often they experience those things personally. Hmm. Hmm. And it's not nearly what it would be portrayed <laughs> in the media. That's right. That's right. That's absolutely right. And it's beautifully said. Uh, I appreciate all the time that you gave me. Uh, I appreciate the time that you gave to our audience to explain about the projects that you're doing. Um, I, on behalf of uh, Pakistani people, appreciate all the good work that you're doing. And I wish you good luck for your future endeavors as well. I will post the link so that people know how they can donate and contribute to your cause. Uh, we, we really respect and appreciate all the good work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Shukriya. Thank you. All right, Cynthia. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. See you next time. Kutapas. Thank you. Kutapas. All right. So now I think you guys can see me. So I don't know what happened. Um, there is some guy with the name Akil, I believe. Um, he um, tried to request to join this video and after that it flipped so I came back again and it flipped again and I'm not even sure uh, in what way my image is shown I'm probably still tilted but I just wanted to tell everyone that this video may not look ideal to you in terms of graphics but I would urge you to listen to this. Listen to the message. Uh, try uh, and learn about Cynthia Ritchie, what she is doing for Pakistan. She is not a Pakistani, she is an American, and she is working hard to portray a better, brighter image for Pakistan. So now I've been told I'm tilted. Now the only option I have is to tilt myself and um, try and look uh, upright to you because I really don't know what to do with that uh, but I will find out I will figure out I just want to tell you that I decided to continue with this video despite the technical challenges we had because I really wanted to bring Cynthia Ritchie uh, in front of you so that she can talk about all the good things that she's doing and um, then you can help her achieve her initiatives her projects you can donate her well uh, all of you who are telling me that I can um, turn the auto rotate function on and stuff like that all of this is already taken care of this is not the first video I have videos videos host but ye technical problem hame face एक साहब के आने की वजह से और उनके इनवाइट रिक्वेस्ट भेजने की वजह से ये सब कुछ हुआ है सो मैं कोशिश करूंगा कि पता लगाऊं क्या वजह हुई इस टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम की बट आई विल पोस्ट दैट वीडियो एनीवेज मैं इस वीडियो को पोस्ट करूंगा आप लोगों के लिए ताकि आप जान सके सिंथिया रिची के बारे में और आप सर्च भी करें इनको तो आपको इनके आर्टिकल्स इनकी डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज देखने को मिलेंगी एआरवाई न्यूज़ पे इनका इंटरव्यू भी आ चुका है आप वो भी देख सकते हैं और आप डोनेट कर सकते हैं इनके कॉस के लिए थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग अस एंड वाचिंग अ वियर्ड एंड यूनिक टेक्निकली चैलेंज्ड वीडियो बट आई आई थिंक लाइफ इज ऑल अबाउट एक्सपेरिमेंटिंग लाइफ इज ऑल अबाउट ट्राइंग न्यू थिंग्स एंड गेटिंग ओवर द ऑब्स्टिकल्स दैट लाइफ थ्रो एट यू all of you have a very good day and bye bye for now